Hey everyone, welcome back to another video where we dive into some more sports analytics. Today we're going to be talking about StatsBomb 360, which provides us more insight into event data. With this data, we can get insight into players and positions rather than just event data and the person that actually has the ball. So this event data is actually really cool and this is a great innovation by StatsBomb and it's great that they're releasing this to the public to be able to use and play with and draw analysis from. So basically, let's get started. Um, we're going to just kind of talk about what is StatsBomb real quick. So if you come to their website, I'll provide a link. Uh, you can go to the StatsBomb. Basically, they have their normal competitor data, which I like these pictures because it kind of shows what their different um, data is. So they have the competitor data. So it's just the single person. They have the their standard StatsBomb data, which gives you around the ball. And their new StatsBomb 360 data which gives more insight into a freeze frame of every event. So they have these freeze frames, which basically allow you to see the entire field, or at least everybody who's in the frame of as if it were on TV or something. So essentially this allows us to do a lot more analysis. We can start doing things such as, they kind of list them down here, but you can do things such as line breaking passes, you can start looking at the defensive shape and you start kind of seeing a lot more than just the person with the ball. You can start seeing, okay, where are the defenders? Um, where are the other attackers? Was this a good pass based on where the uh, where the defenders were and where the attackers were? Or if they should have made a pass to, say, a different player who had a better chance at shooting or scoring a goal. So there's a lot of different things that can start to be analyzed with this data and that's what makes it so cool. It's not just the one granular person, but rather we're going to be able to see everything that's around them as well and kind of get more insight into the decisions that are being taken on the pitch. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're basically going to learn how to get this data, download the data, and load the data in with Python. Um, we're going to be using the StatsBomb API as well as uh, GitHub. They have it, all the data in like a GitHub repo that we can go download. The other package we're gonna be using is MPL Soccer, which allows us to basically plot the pitches, plot passes, plot different heat maps. It's, it's a great package and allows us to do a bunch of different things with soccer analytics. So the first thing that we actually need to do is we need to go get StatsBomb's open data. So what the open data is, is it's basically um, all of the data that StatsBomb has released and it has made available to the public. They have this open data repo. I'll leave a link in the description so you can go and download this data if you want. If you want to download it, you can just come in here, you can go to code, and then you just download the zip file and you'll have that zip file. The negative to just downloading the zip file is, is when they release more data or if they make any updates to the data, say they add more context or they end up changing like a slight percentage point or like a location. If they change any of that, then you won't be able to get any of those updates automatically. You'll have to come and download the zip file every time. So what I recommend doing is actually using GitHub Desktop. So the reason to use GitHub Desktop is it's free and it's really easy to manage your repos and your content um, on GitHub. So if you haven't already, just go to GitHub. Uh, you can just search GitHub Desktop. And then I already have it downloaded, but just go here and just download it for whatever um, OS you're running. So after you download GitHub Desktop, you can come back to the open data and hit code and then hit open with GitHub Desktop. It will, then you can go to open with GitHub Desktop and then it should open this up. So basically what this is, is it's the repository you're looking at and then the current branch. So they have like a master branch. This is more of a GitHub tutorial. I'm not really going to, um, do a whole thing but you're gonna say open with GitHub Desktop and then it's probably gonna have you pull all the information in. It takes a little bit, so if you need to, go ahead and pause and kind of do that while you're waiting for it. I've already done it, so I already have all the data, but you're gonna to wanna to come here and there's kind of some instructions that you'll just need to follow. So the other thing we're actually going to need is the StatsBomb Pi API. So if you come here to another repo, I'll link this all in the description. This is the StatsBomb Pi API that you can use. It's actually a Python package. So what you can do is you can run this pip install StatsBomb Pi. So if you open up a terminal or if you open up um, 
command line, I think is what it is in Windows or whatever you're running in Linux. All you have to do is just say pip install stats bomb pi. And I already have it downloaded, so nothing happened. But if you don't have it downloaded, it will go ahead and download that for you. We also need to do that for MPL soccer. So you want to say pip install MPL soccer. And I already have it downloaded, so nothing happened. But if you don't have them downloaded, then they will come back and they'll do all the download and everything and then you'll have them available. Okay, so now that we have all the kind of maintenance out of the way, that is how we get the data. Um, if you need to rewatch any of that, I kind of moved a little fast, especially the GitHub part. Um, just make sure, like I'll kind of just go over it again. Just make sure that you go into code up here in the stats bomb open data and you can either download the zip or you can open with github desktop you're just going to need to know where you have the data to be able to pull it in um, if it's easier just to download the zip just go ahead and download the zip and then you just open it up once it downloads so now that we have all of that taken care of let's jump into how to actually start using this data loading this data with python and kind of plotting some different events so let's jump into it. Okay, so now we've gotten that all out of the way, let's get into actually using the data, loading the data and kind of playing with some of this data. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're just gonna open up a Jupyter Notebook. So if you open up a terminal and you just type in Jupyter Notebook, if you've already installed the Jupyter package, if you haven't, go type pip install um, Jupyter in the terminal first and it will basically let you do this. So let's just open up a new one. So we're just gonna be using two packages. The first one is going to be pandas. So say import pandas is pd. The next one is going to be the statsbombpy package that we just downloaded. So we'll say from statsbombpy import sb. And then we're also gonna be using the MPL soccer package. So we'll say from MPL soccer import pitch. So this is gonna allow us to basically plot a soccer pitch. So we'll go ahead and run that. And it should just import, if you have any like weird errors that come up saying like could not find pandas, could not find stats bomb pie, could not find MPL soccer, just make sure that you have imported or that you have installed them correctly um, as I showed. And then you should be able to run these packages. If you haven't already, I have another video that kind of explains how the stats bomb Pi API works. Um, basically, they sort things in competitions and then matches. Um, and then that's how you kind of, and then they have like individual matches. And that's how you find the data for each match. So to find all of the different competitions, we just want to say sb.competitions. And then if you run that, then you can kind of see what all the competition IDs are and all the different um, competitions that are available. So if you have been paying attention to recent um, data releases that they've done, they actually released the FIFA World Cup from 2022. So they have all of the stats bomb data available for free um, in that open data repo. And if you come over here, you can see that they have a column called match available 360. And it is true. Well, I mean, they have a timestamp, so that's kind of when they released it. So what we wanna do is we actually wanna get this competition ID right here and the season ID. So it's 43 and 106. So that's gonna be allow us to be able to find all the individual matches. So if we say sb.matches, and then we say competition, competition ID equals 43, and then season, ID equals 106. So now that has shown us all of the matches. There's 64 matches that they have in here. Um, if we're looking for a specific one, they have the match IDs right here. Um, as well, you could kind of like start to filter this out. So if you wanted to see the top 50, it's kind of stupid how you can't see all of them. Um, if you want to see the top 50, then you would just do dot head 50 like this, and then we could get all of them. So we're actually going to be looking for this Argentina France one right here, where this was the World Cup final. And what we need is this match ID right here. 
So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a variable called match ID. So in all caps, it doesn't really matter, but you can just say match ID equals, and then you wanna just set it equal to that variable that we just, or that um, number match ID that we just captured. So now that we know where the match ID um, in StatsBombs database, that's what we kinda need to use to get the actual data from the StatsBomb API. So we'll just say, we're gonna create a data frame um, so data frame is basically just like a CSV or like an Excel sheet, essentially. It's basically a spreadsheet, but for Python. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say match events DF equals SB dot events. So this is using the stats bomb API and then match ID equals match ID like that. So what this is going to do is this is going to pull all of the events but it's not gonna have the stats bomb 360 events. So what we have to do is we have to go find that data that we downloaded. So mine is actually in my finder. Um, it's in documents. So the easiest way to find it is to either know where your get, if you use GitHub, it's just gonna be where all your GitHub repos are stored or if you like downloaded it and unzipped it in your um, download, it's gonna be there on your desktop or something. But basically you just need to go find it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to documents and then mine is in GitHub and then it's in this open data right here. And then this has all of the data basically available. So this has the 360 data right here, which is basically the match ID.json. So we're gonna wanna go and read um, this file from wherever it is. So I usually just like to copy this path. If you right click on a Mac and then you hit get info, you can come here and like copy this where, that's probably not the best way to do it, but that's just how I've done it and I haven't learned a different way. But we're gonna say match 360 DF equals pd.readjson. And then we're gonna do an F string. So put an F before the single quotes and then paste in that like parent path right there. And then um, I believe it had 360 in front of it, yeah. So we want the 360 folder. So make sure it has 360 on the end. And then if you put in these little curly braces, you do match ID. So we want the match ID and then we want dot JSON because it was a JSON file. So this is going to go and create a data frame from that JSON, from all these like JSON files. So if we go back to the documents, these are all JSON files and it has the 360 events and like the 360 freeze frames is what they call them, um, packed in these JSON files and we'll be able to map that back to the match events data frame. So now what we wanna do is we want to run that cell and it should run. And so now we need to actually just merge these um, these data frames. And the way these kind of map together is kind of like if you're familiar with foreign keys and primary keys in a relational database, basically there's a key, there's a column on the match events data frame. So like their data frame of no 360 data. And then there's a column on the 360 data frame and those two match up and we can link the data together with those two columns because they have the same key essentially they have like the same value and so it matches on the rows so just to kind of show that if we look at the match events df and then the column name is id so as you can see it has like this big long token or key there's a bunch of them um, and then if we look at the match 360 DF, and then this one is called event UUID. So basically a unique identifier. So these are all kind of the same length, but there's about half of them because these are only the freeze frames. So in here, there's a bunch of stuff like, oh, here's the starting lineup and here's the, um, like here's the kickoff team and here's the time and all the and here's a substitution like stuff that's not actually related to um, like somebody like 
the ball being in play or like something that's actually happening. It's kind of some side stuff about the game. What we're gonna do is we're basically just gonna link these together. So we're gonna link all of these ones over to this one. And if you wanna see what the match 360 DF kind of looks like, you can do match 360 DF dot head. And basically it's only three columns. It has event UUID, which is the key, the visible area, so it'll tell you kind of like the dimensions of the pitch of what can actually be seen. And then it has this list, which is a the freeze frame, which will tell you, um, we can actually go look at one. So if you say dot iloc, so this allows you to just kind of drill into one. If you say dot iloc, square brackets, and then do zero. Um, and then you can do another pair of brackets and say freeze underscore frame like that. So it's basically just a JSON object and it has true, false. so it has these keys of every single person that's on, on the pitch. So it has teammate, true, actor, false, keeper, false, location, the X and Y values essentially. And that's basically it. So it has all of those for the people who were in the visible area at that time. So now essentially what we need to do is we just need to merge these data frames together and that's where we're going to use the pandas package. So we're just gonna create a base data frame called df equals pd.merge and the left side we want it to be the match events data frame. So the reason for this is because we want to keep all of the rows on the match events data frame and we just want to add where there is a match from the 360 data. We don't wanna get rid of all of the other stuff, but we do want to add the stuff from the 360. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say left equals match, left equals match events DF, right equals match 360 DF, and then we want to say left on. So this is the key from the match events data frame. So we're gonna say left on, so that's where it was the ID, the column ID, and then it's gonna say right on, and we're gonna say event UUID, and then how is left. So when we say left, that means we want to keep everything on the left and just add on what matches from the right, kind of how I was explaining before. So now we have this data frame, and if we look at the columns, or we can do like a df.head, let's look at like the first 25 rows. So now it has all of that event data, but it also has where applicable and where it matched the freeze frame event UUID visible area. So now we have all of that data just in one central location. Technically, you don't need to do this. You could do code where you're just looking at the different event IDs and kind of going back and forth. And But it makes it nice just to have it all in one kind of central repository. So what we're gonna do is we are going to actually go in and just plot one of Messi's passes during the World Cup final. I think it was like the first pass that he made. It was kind of a little chip shot over the top to Di Maria. Um, it was a pretty common pass during the World Cup final as they were trying to play down the left side. But we're just gonna go kind of visualize that and we'll be able to visualize everything that's happening around Messi and the ball and kind of where his teammates are and his opponents were at the same time. If we start looking at some of this data in this data frame, um, we can kind of get a sense of what's what. So we're gonna look at the columns first. And if you go and look at the columns, we're kind of looking for something that allows us just to filter down to messy. And it looks like player and player ID are the two that we're probably going to use. And if we're looking for passes, we're probably looking for some sort of type of like event. So they have shot type and then as well, they have this, they have this type um, column, which basically allows us to filter down to passes. So, I just know this because I've kind of messed with this data already and I kind of prepared for this tutorial. But Messi's uh, player ID is 5503. Um, so we'll say Messi equals 5503. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna filter it down so it's just Messi. If you wanna see all the different player IDs, you could say df.playerid, 
not player ID, player ID dot unique like this with quotes and then run it and it will give you all of the unique player IDs in the thing. And then you can do some other things that kind of help you map player IDs to names. Um, I do recommend kind of either like downloading a data set or, or like looking at this and kind of take it going more in depth with it and kind of seeing exactly what all the columns mean and kind of what data is available. And it kind of helps you to familiarize yourself with the data. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna filter down this data frame to Messi's first uh, kind of pass. So what we do is we say Messi equals, and it was 5503. And then we'll say DF equals DF. And then in brackets, we wanna do parentheses and say DF, brackets again, and then the column player ID. And then outside of the brackets, do a double equal sign. So like is equal to, and then we'll say messy. And then outside of the parentheses, we're gonna say and with the ampersand. And then we're gonna say in parentheses again, DF type is equal. Oh, and then yeah, so right here inside of the bracket, outside of the brackets, inside of the parentheses, pass with a capital P. And then I like to reset my index every time I filter down a data frame. You don't always need to, or maybe there's use cases where you shouldn't. But for this case, we will. So we'll just say reset index and drop equals true. So this basically resets the row, reset index like resets the row number. So it helps just kind of locating um, like precise uh, rows that we're looking for. Okay, so now if we were to look at this data frame, so if we say df.head, we now have all of Messi's passes right here. So it's a pass, um, but we can't see the player ID. So if we say df.player ID, there's a lot of columns. So these are all messy, but really the only information we need is the X and Y coordinates and um, kind of the freeze frame stuff as of right now. So if you kind of go look at stats bomb data, you'll actually realize that they only have a df location and it's a nested list on every row so if you go look at all these they don't have like an x or a y they just have like a location which has the x and the y value so i'm going to show you how you can actually split this out so if you want to split it out into its own separate columns you can say df and then like this and then do x start and y start is equal to PD dot data frame. I'm oh, sorry, just one equal. PD dot data frame and then DF dot location dot to list like this, then a comma and then say index equals DF dot index. So it's a little confusing exactly what's going on, but basically we're just splitting this Lo this list right here on every row and we're just creating two new columns called x start and y start so it makes it easier for us to kind of plot when we need to plot and then we're going to do that for they actually have another one called location end i believe or end location pass end location where is it there's so many columns yeah here it is pass end location. So what we can do with pass end location is we can, if it was a pass, we'll be able to see where the pass ended up, which is really useful for plotting passes because it's good to know where they start, but it's even better to know where they ended. So we basically can create a, kind of the same thing. I'm just gonna copy this and paste it, but you just need to switch X start and Y start to X end and Y end. And then we want to switch this to say pass end location. To kind of sum it up, x end, y end, and then do df.passendlocation.to list instead of df.location.to list. So now that we have our x and our y locations, what we're going to do is we're actually going to plot these on a pitch. So the easiest way to do this is with the MPL Soccer. Um, package. So we're just going to create a pitch. The easiest way is just say P equals pitch with a capital P. And then we'll say pitch type. Pitch 
type equals stats bomb. The reason we have to set the pitch type equal to stats bomb is because stats bomb uses um, different coordinates, so like a different scale of coordinates than other providers do. But MPL Soccer has it set up so you can pass in the pitch type for whatever data provider you're using, and it will automatically be scaled so you don't have to do a bunch of math on your end, essentially, which is very nice. Then the next thing we need to do is say fig, comma ax. So this is using some more like matplotlib stuff and like plotting stuff. But we're just say p dot draw, and then in here we'll do fig size equals twelve eight. So if we were to just run this, oops, gotta add gotta add a uh, parentheses right there. So now if we run that, we now have our pitch. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to just plot Messi's initial pass location. So the way that we actually do that is we're just gonna filter it down to just one pass. We could plot every pass if we wanted to, but we just actually wanna filter it down to one. So we're gonna say DF equals DF and then zero through one like this. So now we have a data frame that is just one row. And then underneath that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna plot this initial pass. So we'll say p.scatter, and then we want to say x equals df, comma x start. So this is gonna create a scatter plot, and it's basically gonna plot where Messi was at. So x equals df, x scatter, then y equals df, or x start, and then y equals df, underscore y start. And then we just need to say, AX equals AX. So we do that, that is where Messi was. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use MPL Soccer to plot the actual pass. So if we say p.lines, and then we do x start as an argument equals df, comma x start, y start equals df, comma y start, df, sorry, brackets, y start, and then we need to add in a couple more arguments. So we need to add an x end equals df x end. And it should be y underscore star. I was just going too fast. Um, and then we want to add another argument called y end equals x or df y end. And then as well, we just need to say ax equals ax again. And then if you want to be a little fancy, you can say comet equals true. So it just makes them look more like a, kind of like a shooting star. It has no added, a, added value, but it just looks cooler, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't look cooler. So if we plot that, we can now see that this is the first pass that Messi made during the game. And it was an over the top pass on the left side to Di Maria. So this is where the StatsBomb 360 data kind of has its unique advantage. If this were just normal event data, this is all we would have. We wouldn't have any context of how many players were around Messi when he made this pass or where the other player was. Like This could just literally look like he was kicking the ball to the corner flag just for kicks and giggles. But now that we have this 360 data, we can actually go and start um, plotting the people around him to get more context of if this was a good pass, if it was a bad pass, and just get more ideas of what was going on during this actual sequence. There's a couple of ways we can do this. Um, the easiest way just to kind of give, um, just to kind of show how it's done, is we can just do a for loop over each row of our freeze frame column. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say 4x in df, dot iloc zero. So if we just run df dot iloc zero in a different cell, I'll show you. It looks like this. Basically, it's the row of that um, that data frame. So it's the first row of the data frame because Python starts counting from zero. And then out here, we can actually say freeze frame. So we want the freeze frame data. So now all we have is we just have this list is what the data looks like. And what we're going to do is we're just gonna loop through this list and just plot each one. So we'll come back up here and we'll say 4x and df to i look zero, we'll add in that freeze frame, and then add in your colon, hit enter, 
and then say if x so if x teammate and then colon so this is going to say if it is a teammate so if this teammate value is true we want to say the color equals we'll say it's um blue because argentino is blue i guess france is blue but either way and then else we want to say cutler equals we'll do red so now what this is going to do is this is going to create a variable if it is a teammate and it's basically just going to say if the teammate if it is a teammate let's set the color to be blue otherwise it's going to be red and then we're just going to do that same thing we did up here with this p.scatter but we're just going to say p.scatter and then in parentheses x equals x um, location so we're looking at these variables now so this location variable and we actually because it's x and it's a list we want to get just the first one um, and then we want to do the same thing for y. So we'll say y equals x location. But instead of getting the first one, we want to get the second one. So in Python, the second one is actually the number one. And then we want to say ax equals ax. And then we want to say color equal, or sorry, c equals color. And then after that, we are going to say, we, we're just going to make them a little bit bigger. So we'll say s equals like 100. So now if we plot that, so we can run this, we now have context of every single player on the pitch during, or that was in the, essentially the frame or in the visible frame during the sequence. So now what we can see is we can actually see that Messi had somebody, I believe it was Chuameni during the game. It might've been Kamavinga. I don't remember who it was exactly. But there was somebody really close to him, and he passed the ball up over the top to this winger out here who was making a run. So now that we have more context, this is actually probably the best pass he could have made. Because going back here wouldn't have done anything, but this put the ball into a threatening position with a player who was going to be able to um, either cross it in or be able to get some sort of cutback, or just basically he's advancing the ball. Because out here, there wasn't really anything going on. He could have gone backwards, and maybe if this guy was the fastest human on earth, he could have ran past everybody and gone scored, but likely wasn't going to happen. So this was a good pass, and now that we have more context into this, we're able to see and kind of get more ideas about what's going on in the actual sequence in the play. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Um, StatsBomb360 has been a really cool tool to play around with and some of the insights that I've been able to see other people do and kind of see the analysis that people are putting out there has been really cool to see. Um, if you have any questions, I know this is kind of a more advanced um, topic and it was kind of using some more advanced techniques to like get all the data. Um, but if you do have any questions, be sure to just leave a comment down below. Thanks, everybody. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.